Hi there, I'm Patrick for Hoo-Ha Sports with our first episode of Club Chatter and we have the honour and privilege to be joining the Toon Army Malaysia, the Newcastle Supporters Club of Malaysia. I have Apan together with Zam. Zam is of course the new president of the club. So we're going to be talking to them about Newcastle's season preview. So guys, welcome to the show. Uh, let's start off with uh, giving us an update on what happened in the off-season together with Newcastle. Who's in, who's out? Okay, basically we got some French players coming in. We didn't have a good pre-season, uh, top seater V pre-season. Uh, not convincing enough, but it's only a pre-season. Okay. Uh, I think uh, the pre-season in USA got a lot of mix-up and we all the controversy surrounding. But and we let some of the best players uh, leaving like Nolan, yeah, Kevin uh, Nolan. Yeah, what's up with Nolan? You know, he's he's left Newcastle to go to West Ham in the in the Championship. I don't know because because he was one of the top scorers when we were in the championship. Maybe he, that suits his style, I think. Uh, but it's a, it's a loss to to us because he 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 was the top scorer from midfield for us uh, last season. So to me personally, it's a, a big loss. Uh, for me, uh, we don't have someone influential like Nolan because if you see the squad now, there's no one like can bring the moral up like Nolan, and it's a big loss. But somehow I understand why he left because uh, it's understandable that he wants a five-year contract. And my my Ashley, it's very hard to pronounce his name, <laughs> uh, have this policy of bringing young players. In a way, it's a mix-up because in you cannot just win with. I mean, you cannot just win with younger players. You need experience as well, blending them. Yeah, talking about Mike Ashley is just like predicting the Malaysian weather. You really don't know what he's going to do next. But looking from last season, where do you think Newcastle need to improve this season? Okay, like I said just now, uh, goals were from basically from midfield. Okay, uh, since Kevin, uh, sorry, Andy Carroll left, um, the goals were hard to come by from the strikers. So to me, uh, it's best for uh, uh, Mike Ashley to bring up a top prof- prolific number nine. Will they do it by the end of this, uh, by the transfer window? Uh, well, there's a lot of rumours, and usually Newcastle always bring rumours around. We signed Mbamba, but he's not really, he's, I mean, he's got a lot with West Ham from the few games he played, but he's not the number nine that, you know, like Carroll, Sherrill, all the legendary Newcastle players. We need someone who's really, really can score banging 20 goals a season, and so far, we haven't done that. Uh, but it's quite strange to find out that Newcastle fans actually can pronounce Dembaba's name rather than Mike Ashley. But let's get to our hot topic segment. Now, Mike Ashley has banned his players from using the social media. What's up with that? It's obvious that he's, he's afraid of his own shadow because he's doing something. So he's afraid that the, the players or his staff under him is going to be rebellious against him. So that's why he banned the, twi- uh, the use of Twitter. And Joey Button was one of the major casualties and he's pretty much been given a free transfer to move away from the club probably as soon as possible. Do you think he will go? Um, I don't think he will go, but my Ashley definitely... See? It's hard to pronounce his name again. My Ashley definitely wanted him to go. But we will see because Padu already said that he will accept his apology. And we will see tonight either he's playing or not. That, that will show something. I mean, if he's playing tonight, that means he's forgiven and bringing us to squad. he got one year left in the contract. I think he'll be sick out his contract to the end. Looking at more uncertainties with the Newcastle guys, well, uh, looking to, at the bookmakers, they've put Alan Pardew in the top three managers to first get the sack this season. Yeah, yeah. Your thoughts on that one, Zam? Okay, seriously, my personal viewing, the, he won't get sacked. Uh, if we don't re- get relegated uh, at the end of the season, he won't get sacked. Why? Because he's a yes man. <laughs> he's, he's easy to manage with. So that's why. No matter how, 16, 17, he won't get sacked. Trust me. What about you? Uh, definitely agree. Padu is a yes man. You, we, you never see him say something bad about my Ashley. Again, hard to pronounce his name. Um, <laughs> uh, he's just a puppet used by Ashley and uh, Derek Lambias for hours. I don't see him as a better manager than Chris Hilton. And if you see uh, from his recent interviews, he doesn't really leave the moral of his squad up. But we will see. We will give him a few matches to see how it goes. And that's pretty much going to end our first part here at Club Chatter. And uh, I would have to say that uh, it's the last time we talk about Mike, actually, because coming up in the next part, we'll be talking about home and away and uh, probably Newcastle's biggest rivals, Sunderland, and what the season holds for the Newcastle fans and what they think the season is going to be like for Newcastle. More when Club Chatter continues on Hoha Sports.
welcome to the part two of Club Chatter together, the Newcastle supporters or Toon Army Malaysia. So in the second part, we'll be talking about more about what holds for Newcastle this season. But first, it's about home and away where we talk about uh, other clubs around. And now uh, one pretty much would be a thorn in your back would be Sunderland. Let's look at the fortunes this season. I mean, they look like you know a formidable side. They'll be achieving big things with the squad that they have. What are your thoughts about Sunderland? Okay, they, I, from, from what I could see, they, they bought eight new players. Okay, um, one of them would be Conor Wickham. I don't know whether that's going to be a, a masterpiece uh, move. But basically, ge- ge- geographically and traditionally, they are one of our rivals. But to me, again, personally, uh, Liverpool would be my bitter rivals. Because why? They stole our players. They bully, they bully in the transfer market. So I, 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 I really can't understand. What are they trying to... Uh, what are their dreams? Uh, break into the top four? Come on. Maybe it's more like fulfilling Kenny Daglish's dream. But then it's quite refreshing that you know Newcastle don't have Sunderland to worry about. They worry about Liverpool. But who else do you think are direct threats to Newcastle this season? Well, you can see lots of clubs improving like Fulham. Under Martinho, they really did well in the Europa League recently. And I think one of the biggest threat is Aston Villa. Uh, with Alex Malish currently in the helm. They sign good players. They sign Enzo Bia. We supposed, we're supposed to sign, but in the end, my Ashley as usual. Stoke are in there as well. Yeah. They sign Woodgate, Upson. They still can fully utilise those old players. But Woodgate, you know, depending whether he plays one game for them this season or at least two. All right, but they still reach the FA Cup final. So it shows something about Stoke. Okay. And right. regarding Kenny Daglish, I think he just bitter about our club because we sacked him last time. Yeah. So he's just buying all our players back. Wow, this thing goes even deeper than just winning Carroll. It goes back way back when uh, Kenny Daglish was their manager. But let's take your, your opinion and look at the season. Who do you think would be the dark horses for this season in the, the Premier League? Okay, like I said just now, um, Aston Villa, uh, Apan mentioned just now Fulham. Stoke will be in there, um, so nah, not for Wigan, not for Black, uh, Blackburn, sorry. But there's always this thing about the, the, you know, the club at the bottom during the Christmas fixtures will probably get relegated. Who do you think will be out of the Premier League at the end of the season? For me, uh, this Blackburn will be down there. They don't sign any players at all this season, they just throw out their best players. Uh, probably Swansea and Norwich. Wigan depends. If they... They haven't signed the replacement for Enzo Bia, which really helps them last season. Yeah. So they will be in the mix up as well. You got the same thing about who's going down? Okay, uh, to me personally, it's going to be uh, Wigan is going to be down there. Wolverhampton depends, depending uh, on the situation. Uh, Backburn, definitely for me. Because with Steve Keen, with less experience, with no play sign, they're doomed. And of course, when you have uh, owners who ha- manage a poultry farm, well, <laughs> tactically, I don't think so they're going to get it right. But anyway, Here's the bonus question. Who do you think is going to win the title this season? Okay. Or most likely to win it. Uh, sorry, many fans. It won't go to be uh, your... Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, to me, it might be going to be, it's, it's going to be a surprise answer for me. It's going to be uh, Arsenal or Chelsea. Arsenal or Chelsea? Chelsea. Man City will be in it as well. Afan? For me, looking at the squad currently, uh, I have, sorry, I have to say I'm just in it. But it depends as well because uh, United they have a squad depth. It's really they have Velbert back, they have Cleverly back. Chelsea it all depends on Torres. If he performs this season, they will be on top there. But if he does did what he did last season and like how he did against Malaysia, <laughs> I don't think Chelsea will be up there. Well, it's still the fifty million pound question with Fernando Torres. But let's wrap this up and look at uh, Newcastle season. How do you think they're going to fare? How are they going to start? What's going to happen during the Christmas run of fixtures? The second half of the season come January, and where do you think Newcastle will end up? Okay, I, uh, from the fixtures for the first two months, it's going to be against the mid-table teams. It's going to be quite okay. At the end of October, November, it's going to be Man City, Man United, and Chelsea. It's going to be a bit tough. End of December, Liverpool and Man U with the FA Cup coming around, it's going to be tough. Other than that, it's going to be so-so. Uh, Boxing Day fixtures against Bolton. I think after. If you know Newcastle have a jinx against uh, during the Boxing Day, uh, hopefully they'll win against Bolton. And come uh, the second part of the season? Second part of the season... Um, Survival or somewhere mid-table? Okay, okay. Uh, logically, we have the squad, but they are still not teaming up yet. Uh, like other people, we might proceed uh, our expectations. Real- realistically, we're not going to be top four, sorry. Um, but logically, it's going to be mid-table. 
Yeah. Do you share his thoughts, Apan? Uh, in a way, uh, we, we signed quite good players, young players, Johan Kabe from Lille. He won, the, he won the French League with them. Marvox, we were supposed to sign for Liverpool, but we, somehow we managed to get it. And he's, he looks fit. I don't know where the question about his medical failing or what. Right. I mean, Liverpool signed Carroll and say he's fit, so <laughs> that's something to mention about Liverpool. After that, though, he fell off the bar stool and got <laughs> injured. So, yeah, I think we'll be around 8 to 12, around there. 8 to 12. So it looks like it's going to be mid table for Newcastle this season, but it's still match day one. We'll never know what's going to happen in the game of football because, as they say in Malaysia, bola itu bulat. So we're going to wrap our club chatter here together with the Newcastle boys to give us some info on how the other Newcastle fans can join your group. Do you have a Facebook group? Uh, do you have anything coming up, like you know, either viewing parties or match day? Give us some info, Nizam. Okay, uh, okay. To me, uh, Facebook is. Uh uh, it's a useful thing because I thought I was the only one with Apan who supported Newcastle. Uh, I'm surprised to know that there are more than 100 people supporting Newcastle. You could see all the boys here. All right. Uh, um, I'm very. It's very. It's a good news to see them where we share all the same passion. Uh, maybe um, if you are interested to join us uh, as a group, um, we can join us at uh, Tun Army Malaysia in Facebook. Yeah. And they have more details there about you know your next events and all that. Yeah, we, we're currently planning uh, to organize more events like this gathering with Fusal uh, because we have to thank Yuhua as well because last season they organized something that brings because we relegated two seasons ago and all the Tottenham fans went missing. I know there's somewhere but they all, we're all watching streaming online. Question of which match is not shown. So this season you can see this first gathering and we got more than 20 people coming at least. So it's a good sign and hopefully it can it's continue. A it's a good start. So it's a good start for us as well here at Club Chat on Hoo-Ha Sports. So we'll catch up with another club at another time. But for the time being, our thanks to the Toon Army Malaysia and we'll catch up with you soon on Hoo-Ha Sports.